was uh, 10 years old, my uh, father gave me a slide rule, and uh, I found it absolutely fascinating. Now, for those of you born after 1965, this is what a calculator looked like. <laughs> and the reason I was fascinated by it is because it's when I first realized that you can use your mind to actually create really interesting things in the physical world. That's why I wanted to become an engineer. And as an engineer in the field of human resources, I am a bit of an oddball. And I like taking engineering concepts and transplanting them into HR. And the topic I've been studying is this idea of peak performance. Now, I used to think that peak performance was related to what professional athletes refer to as entering the zone. But then I realized that not all of us feel like that's all that easy to do, nor does it happen all that often. Now, Bobby Orr certainly looks like he's in the zone here. <laughs> I tried uh, recreating this position. I found the side effects are terrible. <laughs> so that's when I started studying another state of peak performance called flow. Have you ever done something where you become completely absorbed in the activity that you're doing? Time absolutely flies. Maybe you play hockey and you're, you find you're playing so well, you're skating so fast, you're melting the ice. Or you go to a party, you're the life of the party, you're meeting people you don't know, you're, you're creating instant connections. Or, as a chef put it, a dream comes to you for a dish, you can actually see it and taste it in your mind. Now, I have no idea how you taste something in your mind, but you can see it and then you build the ingredients and you feel like when you plate it, you feel like you're creating art on a plate. So we all have this type of experience. It's this experience of flow. Just take a minute and think about something that you do on a pretty regular basis, but every once in a while, you do it extremely, extremely well. It's kind of like waking that sleeping giant within you. And so I'm going to talk about three things that you can do to kind of trigger the state of flow, because when you trigger the state of flow, you boost your performance exponentially. Now, the city of Thunder Bay has produced 94 NHL hockey players since the history of the NHL, 94. The uh, highest ranking player in terms of points scored is a fellow by the name of Alex Del Vecchio. Here's a statue of Alex at the Joe Louis Arena. It's a kind of depicting an action shot, him taking a, a shot. If you count the number of hockey sticks in this one statue, you'll find that there's eight. And I don't think that's a random number because the Detroit Red Wings have this tradition. They started in 1952 called the Legend of the Octopus. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not a, an expert in the game, but even I know this isn't exactly a normal feature of the game. <laughs> and the eight tentacles of the octopus basically stand for how many playoff games you had to win to win the Stanley Cup, win eight games. That's what the octopus is for. And this is a perfect example of coming up with a symbol that allows you to picture wild success. Now, this symbol is a good one because it taps into three characteristics of flow. The first one is the goal absolutely clear. The second one is, do you know how you're doing at all times? Are you getting feedback? And the third one is, is it stretch? So as you're coming up with your own kind of symbol for wild success, just ask yourself those three questions and you'll, you'll know you've got a good one. Now, I reached out to the organizers and I said, or I asked, you seem to have quite a few NHL players here. Any chance I can actually talk to one of them? So they said, well, how about this guy, Patrick Sharp? So three Stanley Cups, Olympic gold medalist, born in... Winnipeg, but raised in Thunder Bay. And he had some really, really interesting things to say about flow. He said, if you measure how fast I'm skating, you won't be able to tell. If you measure how fast I'm hitting the puck, you won't be able to tell. Only I know what's coming. I get a couple of lucky breaks, and then it snowballs from there. So I think that's a perfect example of, of kind of this idea of flow. Now, what Patrick does is he continually watches and relives, mentally relives the goals that he scored in, in minute detail, watches the highlight reel. Not because he's trying to work on his technique, but because by watching his highlight reel, 
he actually ends up experiencing the same feelings he was experiencing when he scored the goal. So watching his highlight reel kind, kind of puts him in this brain at positive state. You probably know the state I'm talking about. When you're at brain at positive, you always perform better than when you're at brain at neutral. So when you watch your highlight reel, you start reliving and feeling like you were when you, when you scored the goals. Now, you watch enough highlight reels, you start to see patterns in your own performance. You can take those patterns and you can kind of sequence them into a list of triggers that put you into flow and you can create a checklist. So here's my kind of sequence of triggers. I call it loosen the mental knot, five steps. I've been working on this for probably about 25 years. It's kind of like a recipe of how I try to bring out my best. I'm always fiddling with it. Now the first step is taking something that you know and distilling it down to its key points. So taking everything I know about flow and talking about it in 10 minutes is, is an example of the first step. And the second one is this idea of clarifying and confirming. So in science, we call that field testing. By using hockey-based examples, I'm trying to make my points around flow a little clearer. Third one is find the outliers. Now, I am fascinated by data, and I'm fascinated by the, the weird, odd data that doesn't look like the rest of the data. Kind of the positive outlier, the positive needle in the haystack, because under outliers are clues to peak performance. So I mentioned that Thunder Bay has produced 94 hockey players, which makes it the seventh highest producing hockey player city in the world. Now, if you look at it on a per capita basis <clears throat> and take population into account, take inhabitants into account, Thunder Bay is a very close second to Timmins. So on a per capita basis, Thunder Bay produces, is the second highest producing hockey player factory in the world. What is it about these two communities, Timmins and Thunder Bay, that makes them so good at producing hockey players? Hopefully you're thinking about that right now. Why, why do you produce so many great hockey players? Wouldn't it be neat if you could take what you do in that arena and apply it, create a checklist from it, apply it to other arenas, apply it to healthcare, apply it to mental health, apply it to music, apply it to other sports. So that's kind of the idea of transplanting from one field to another. And hopefully, if I've done enough of this, and you're thinking about these things, and I've met my step five, which is to basically stimulate your thinking, cause you to think about something that you've thought about before, but in a completely new and different way. So when you trigger the state of flow, you boost your performance significantly. There are three things you can do to trigger flow. Number one, picture wild success with a symbol. Number two, watch your highlight reel. And number three, sequence your triggers into a checklist. All you need to do to start to start this is one, one strong moment, one little strong moment. So thank you for making this a strong moment for me. <laughs>